It's one of the most important governmental agencies in Southern California. It's the one that gets everybody around. It's the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Los Angeles County, Metro, and they are hemorrhaging riders on their 1,400 miles of bus lines. Laura Nelson is the woman who covers transportation for the Los Angeles Times. Very interesting report this past week on how Metro has lost, what, 25 percent of its bus ridership over the past 10 years? Is That's that right. right? That's right. Do we know why? There's a lot of reasons, but there are some central themes. Um, the bus is too slow, doesn't get you where you need to go, um, or driving is just better in a lot of ways. And people are saving up for cars. That's right. There was a study done by UCLA last year that shows that people are putting even modest pay increases toward whatever car they can get. Used car, an old car, anything that will help get them off the transit system and onto the freeway. And of course, with fewer people taking mass transportation, that means more cars on the road which you would think would lead to more people taking mass transit, but that's not, what, that's not how it's working. Not been the case yet. Um, ridership has been falling steadily for 10 years. Is this a national problem or is this a local problem? It's a it is a local problem, but it's also a national problem. Um, the vast majority of major cities across the U.S. have seen slides in bus ridership, too. Um, many of them are more uh, modest than L.A. L.A.'s is the most severe of any of the big transit systems in the country, but New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, um, you know, Houston, other major cities have seen similar. Right? Have you studied rail? Rail has seen um, a slight increase in ridership over the last 10 years, and that's been helped a lot by the opening of the Expo Line to Santa Monica, uh, the Gold Line to Boyle Heights, and out into the San Gabriel Valley. So those lines have brought in some new riders, but the older lines, the subway to North Hollywood, the Blue Line to Long Beach, the Green Line, which goes along the 105 freeway, have all seen declines as well. So, in fact, uh, from what I understand, tailpipe emissions have gone up. They are, and actually passenger vehicles are the number one source of greenhouse gas in the state. That means your car, my car, everyone's car, unless you drive a fully electric or fully hydrogen vehicle, and most of us don't. What are the solutions here? Well, there's a number of options on the table. Metro is in the middle of doing an overhaul of the whole bus system. They're studying where people need to go in L.A. County and how long it would take to take transit as opposed to getting there in the car. And then they're looking at solutions to how to make the bus a more efficient and a more competitive option compared to driving. So... Speeding up the bus usually means creating a space for it on the road, either with a bus lane all day or a bus lane during peak periods, maybe in those areas where you have parking along the curb, um, buses only. It's been used on Wilshire Boulevard, and it's also used on Sunset Boulevard near Dodger Stadium. That's on the table, although it's obviously unpopular with, with drivers. And unpopular with drivers and neighbors. I mean, some, yeah. some communities just don't want it. That's right. There's actually two projects that are being discussed right now that have sparked some outcry from residents. One of them is along Nordoff Street in the San Fernando Valley near Cal State Northridge. And the other is um, in Eagle Rock to Pasadena. Are there not safety reasons? Because I hear uh, from individuals who say they've tried, and this, this includes uh, Metro Rail and the Red Line, and they get tired of homeless people sleeping in the car, frankly, and that there, there is a mental health issue on the streets of L.A. And sometimes you're, you're in a subway car, no security around. And, all the, and I, that's been the, I, I've seen that personally. Somebody starts to scream and shout and crowd, and you're not sure what's going to happen. There are people who just don't feel safe. That's right. It's been a major concern for Metro, and studies of former riders have shown that after complaints about the service itself, it's not fast enough, it doesn't get me where it needs to go. Reason number two is a sense of security on the system is the reason why people are leaving. Um, Metro has hired um, a small, um, about 10 social workers who are out working on the system trying to help people get into housing, and they've also poured a lot more money into security contracts with the LAPD and the Sheriff's Department to try to help keep the system safe. But in enclosed spaces um, or when you're waiting for a bus on a dark street corner, those are certainly concerns, especially for women. And so that's an issue. Uh, uh, if that's a concern, that also impacts CO2 and, and the bigger issue of global warming. That's right. Uh, where, does this, where does Metro go from here? Well, they have about a year left in this major overhaul of the system trying to figure out what they need to do to eat, bring people back and to keep the riders that they currently have so that they don't lose them as well. Um, they will be looking at kind of a massive reorganization of the system, figuring out which lines need to work better, where they need to put new routes to help draw people in, and how they can make those routes competitive with driving. But it's not going to turn around anytime soon. It will be a slow process. Laura Nelson of the Los Angeles Times covers transportation. Your Twitter handle is? At Laura underscore Nelson. You're, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I really appreciate it.
Up next, a proposed monument for fallen journalists on the Washington Mall. This after the anniversary of the worst shooting of journalists in the history of the United States at the Capitol Gazette. We talk with the president of the Tribune Company, David Dreyer, former member of Congress. News Conference next.